Yo, welcome guys. Today, not only with a new camera position, but also with a new potential series for the channel. The skill specialization deep dives that I was releasing for all the weapons received really, really positive feedback. I'm really grateful for that. Thank you, everyone. And I was thinking about what new series can I push out that is like in that direction and I have not seen on YouTube at all. And I came up with trying to explain you how I use Fury Crafting to min max my damage output in the end game. And to do so, I will show you how to calculate now the effective DPS of quick fire and how to use that to choose the specializations that give you the biggest DPS increase. This is a lot of work, so we are only going to do it for one skill first. If you guys like it and you smash that button, then we can do that for as many skills as you want. Also, if you don't like it, maybe drop a comment and explain me how I can do it better, like what informations you are missing. I am open to constructive feedback and willing to adapt, so it's like the most entertaining and the most educational for you guys. So the first thing that you need to do, do to be able to calculate um, which skill is like the best, which specialization is the best, is getting the base stats of the character in the board. And what we need to consider here is the base damage that the weapon has. We need to consider the skill damage boost that is a direct multiplier. Since we are using a crossbow, we also have to check for the offhand attack chance of the weapon. Also, then we need to have the offhand damage we need to know how how often are we critical striking we need to know how often we are getting a heavy attack for twice the damage and we need to know the base cooldown of the skill important to note here is that i chose a critical rate of 100 that's also the reason why for the base damage and the offhand damage i did not give the range of what the skill hits we are assuming 100 critical maybe one side note here in front and liberty critical means that if you're having a range on your weapon, like from 15 base damage to 250, that it will always use the highest possible damage on the weapon to calculate your whole damage. So if you're having 100% critical, you would always get the highest base damage. One difference in Throne and Liberty is that you can actively reduce the critical rate of someone else by stacking endurance. That also means that critical is one of the stats in Throne of Liberty where when you have 100%, it does not mean that you will get one critical hit every time you're attacking. So it's, it is viable to, for example, go like 160% critical rate, so the enemy reduces your with their endurance and you still have the 100% up. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. If you want to take a look on how the damage is calculated, we are taking the formula out of here. I'm not going to in deep into the formulas, just want to show my thought process. And then we are having the normal damage that we are dealing using quick fire without any skill specializations or whatever against a normal monster. If we have weakened the monster before, we are getting an additional damage boost. We are also assuming that we are playing perfectly. It takes too much time to do all the calculations for like not being able to weaken a monster or whatever. We are take, we are looking at a proper rotation, so like the max capacity of what the skill is able to do if you're playing it correctly. Then we need to also factor in the offhand chance, because this makes us not hitting the target um, only three times, like described in the skill here. Because while quick fire is used, we have the ability to proc offhand weapon attacks. There is another increase if we are going those three attacks and we turn them into four. That means with our offhand weapon attack chance, we are now here from an average of four hits. We are now having an average of 5.4 hits that we are doing. And if we also factor in heavy attack, we are seeing another increase right here of about 600. Important to note here is that those values should not be looked at as like an absolute value. The um, calculation has like a small deficit. Like I would say it's like 98% correct. There's like some things that's like um, hard to calculate off game when you don't have a real DPS meter in game. But this does not matter as long as you are looking at the numbers from a percentage point. We can say here 
that the increase yeah, of taking um, chain fire in our DPS is 33.3%. And this is accurate. We are also having the option here for this stats to choose them at any time to make them applicable to our perfect stats in game. Here, I chose like stats that are realistically obtainable if you have trash purple gear. This is because I thought this is the gear that most people probably want to start out with and has like the most value to know. So this value right here is considered the burst. This is the full damage that we are able to pop out when we are pressing the skill. If we are choosing the um, the min chain fire skill specialization. To now understand now what the effective DPS is, this is the damage that we are able to deal if we would only use that skill. So basically we would have nothing on the bar. We use that skill after the cooldown is off. We're using it again. This is the effective DPS that a skill can do. And this is also the value that you want to know when you're optimizing your build for PvE. If you already know, we have to consider the cooldown of the skill to figure to go from a burst potential to an effective DPS potential. When we want to know how the effect of DPS is increasing if you're also checking for the cooldown here, where each critical hit will decrease the cooldown by 10%. We cannot say, okay, we are hitting 5.4 times and then we are just getting 54% cooldown reduction. It is a cooldown reduction for each hit. So basically at the start, we have a cooldown of six seconds. We're hitting one, so we're getting 10% of that. But then we are only having 5.4 as a base value and we're only getting 10% reduction of that new cooldown. The more often we are getting a critical hit, every consecutive critical hit will reduce the absolute reduce in cooldown by a decent chunk. The effective DPS upgrade that we are getting here is close to 60% specking that specialization. So we know min chain fire about 33%, cooldown close to 60% and this is also your best setup for quickfire skill specialization. Let me show you why I didn't even consider doing the in-depth math for Gale and damage. So Gale will explode after dealing 10 stacks. So you're not even able to trigger it with the 5.4 hits. So it was not relevant for the calculation. And if we're looking at damage, if you're increasing the damage by 20%, but also increasing the cooldown by 50%, your DPS by default will just be worse. Damage is only good to increase your burst potential. So now we know what to pick for the quick fire itself if you want to have the highest DPS. This overall strategy on how to approach it can be used for much more. We can now look, take a look at, for example, Cleaving Moonlight, do the same calculation for that skill, and then we can actually evaluate which skill is better. Here again, we will not do that in face value. So we will not say, oh, the Quickfire has 534, while Moonlight Leader has like 1068. We would say the effective DPS of Moonlight is 100% higher than Quickfire. This way we are accurate about what we are saying and the face values are not that important and we have the information that we need because the information that we need from theory crafting is is option a better and stronger or is option b better and stronger and if we are doing that approach we get this information right away also interesting to note is we have the ability here to calculate synergies between skills really easy so let's say for example you want to figure out if selfless diffusion is a good add-on to your quick fire on your bar then you can calculate okay selfless diffusion is increasing my offhand chance no, to 70 percent then you can just change the 35 here to 70 and you will know the impact on the effective dps if you're using that buff and that is basically all the information you need to make the best um, decisions for your skills and optimize your stuff for the end game I know this was like a real deep dive into theory crafting, but if you like those kind of videos or you're missing any information, don't forget to let me know, like the video or give me a comment and I will try to answer everything in 24 hours. Cheers guys.